Welcome everybody, this is the Doctor. Welcome to Star Trek Online. Today I've got a bit of a special video for you. We are going to go over all the career types in Star Trek Online, talking about the science character, the engineer, and the tactical officer, and we are going to talk about building a good captain using bridge officers and powers available in space and ground. This has been a much wanted video. There have been a lot of people that have been wanting me to do a video focusing on the three career types in Star Trek Online and going over how to build a good character from each career type. Now, here's a caveat to this. There's going to be a lot of changes coming to this game after season or after um, the fifth anniversary, that is. The bridge officer system is getting a huge major update or revamp or overhaul. There are going to be many changes to the powers available for bridge officers and all the different things you can do and how you get those powers and all of it's going to change. So this video is a look at how the game is now before the fifth anniversary of Star Trek Online to show us and go over what it is like now. That way we can compare when the changes come to how it is different. And then we can focus on each career type more specifically and talk about all the powers and how to build a good character under the new revamp. But I wanted to do this video first just to give us a refresher course on how the game is now and has been for the last five years. Granted, I should have done this video eons ago. I did a video a long time ago for another YouTuber going over an engineering character and how to build a good engineering character. That was a success. A lot of people liked that and frankly wanted to see more. They wanted me to do it with a tactical and a science and uh, really dive into that aspect of the game. So this video is going to take on that challenge and I'm not going to go extremely in depth because all of this will be changing soon, but I will be going over basically my characters. All that I can do is to show you my best characters, science, tactical, and engineering, and how I have best built them for space and ground, and go over the options available as a Star Trek online player. So if you're new to the game, this could be a lot of useful information. If you are completely, just know everything about this game, totally advanced, probably not the video for you unless you are just curious about um, my characters. Other than that, Hopefully that there will be some information here that are that is useful to gamers of Star Trek online So the very first thing I want to do is let's start a new character Because this is where you will come to when you first start Star Trek online as a new player You have to make some decisions and I'm going to kind of approach this like a hierarchy at the top at the very top end of the hierarchy you've got the three faction choices. This is on the left side here. Starfleet, Romulan, and it changes the theme and coloring, and Klingon. These are your options, right? This is what you have in-game as far as factions go. So what is a faction in Star Trek Online? Well, basically think of it as your home base. This is where all your resources will come from. This is who you will be aligned with. This is who you will have, you know, enemies that make sense to your faction. You know, for example, with Starfleet, Klingons might be an enemy or, you know, other, another race. With Klingons, the Federation might be an enemy. Um, this is basically the center hub of everything you do in Star Trek Online is based on that faction, right? Now, here's the thing about factions that you need to know. The Starfleet faction probably has the most attention to detail from Cryptic. And what that means is 
the Starfleet faction pretty much receives the most attention from the game developers. As such, it's the largest faction in the game. It is. It has the most available ships and other things available to that faction. And that's just the way the game is. Now, things have gotten a lot better for the Klingons and Romulans, but it still is, does not compare to just the size of the Starfleet faction. The Romulan faction is actually maybe not even considered a full faction. You might want to even call it a half faction. And the reason being is because, and this is not really a spoiler, but just a fact, as you progress through the Romulan storyline, you have to make a choice between the Federation alignment or a KDF, Klingon Defense Force alignment. That means you ally with either Starfleet or Klingon faction. Now, that has benefits because it gives you access to the Starfleet or Klingon alliance it give, um, faction stuff, but it is all. it also makes it feel like you're not completely a full alliance because you are having to ally with one of those other factions, whereas Starfleet, you don't have to ally with anything. You are just Starfleet. With the Klingon Defense Force, you don't ally with anything. You are just the Klingon Defense Force. But only the Romulan one, they make you choose. You have to ally with Starfleet or the Klingon. Now, you are still a, you can still be a Romulan. You, are, you still have access to all the Romulan ships, homeworld, all that great stuff. It's just that now you have this door open to you of Starfleet, or Klingon, and you basically play the storyline missions associated with either of those factions. So, this is where you need to first make your decision of, you know, what faction you want to play in Star Trek Online. If you are not familiar with Star Trek at all, you've never seen an episode of Star Trek on TV, you've never seen a movie, you know nothing about the Star Trek universe and you just want a fun sci-fi space game, I would say Starfleet is probably your best bet. Starfleet is going to give you the most content. It's going to give you most of the stuff. It's also going to allow you to be with most of the players in the games. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves here. I think the largest player base in this game is on the Starfleet Federation side. So if you need help with the game, playing the game, if you are on the Starfleet faction, there will probably be more people there to help you, especially when it comes to later in-game content, PvE content or STF content, where you have to get together in teams and uh, do that stuff. You will probably find more people on the Starfleet side. If you are, let's say... A, you know a lot um, about Star Trek Online, uh, about Star Trek in general. You've seen a lot of it. Well, then you, you kind of already know what to expect out of the factions. It's just like you would think about it on the TV or movies. The Romulans are Romulans, although these Romulans are a little different, I have to say. Uh, the Klingons are Klingons. And at that point, you can kind of decide what type of player you want to be. Starfleet, or the Federation faction, Starfleet faction is going to be the goody two-shoes faction. They do everything by the book. Prime Directive is Prime. It's, it's a lot like being Janeway on Voyager. Uh, you're going to um, be very diplomatic. You're going to always want to do the right thing. All the dialogue that you get on the Starfleet Federation side will be very nicely worded. I guess I could say. Now, in comparison to that, the Klingon faction is pretty much the game's opposite of the Starfleet faction. If you want to be, I guess, a little more realistic in dialogue, you want to maybe play an evil character or a spy or some kind of negative connotation, the Klingon Defense Force can be that, but it doesn't always have to be either. Remember, Klingons are very honorable, so you could play it from a warrior standpoint as well. The Klingon faction's dialogue will be much more threatening than Starfleet dialogue. They don't play by the book. They throw the book out the window. 
So this is the yang to Starfleet's yin in Star Trek Online. The Romulan faction may be a bit in between both of those because it can go either way. You can play a good character, you can play a bad character. The Romulan faction, or what's unique about it, is again the fact that you align with either Starfleet or Klingon down the road. So this allows you to have access to more than the Starfleet or Klingon would alone. The Romulan faction gives you access to Romulan ships, but at the same time, when you align with Starfleet, then you have Starfleet ships, and when you align with Klingon, then you have Klingon ships on top of that. So you can use the other faction's resources. So if you want the most options in the game, I think the Romulan faction really offers the most. So those are the first three choices you have to make when you start this game is do you want to do you want to be Starfleet officer? Do you want to be a Romulan officer or a Klingon officer? And with Starfleet, you are you are just dead on Starfleet the entire way with Klingon, you are dead on Klingon, but with Romulan, you are Romulan, but you get to choose Klingon or Starfleet down the road as you play through the content. So those are the, that's the first step that you need to make when you start Star Trek Online. What faction do you want to join? And that just depends on your knowledge of Star Trek. First of all, if you know a lot about it, um, being a Klingon or Romulan could really be fun. If you don't know a lot about Star Trek, though, I would go with the Starfleet or Federation faction. That will just be the easiest to acclimate yourself to. All right. Beyond that, before we get to the three careers, which we're going to go over, we have, of course, the species that we want to be. Now, the species do change depending on the faction you choose. For example, I have here a human, I have an Andorian, a Bajoran, Benzite, a Betazoid, and it goes on and on. Um, now, you can purchase a Klingon or be a Klingon. Um, it's unlockable through the C store. So special species like that, which are not related to that faction, do cost extra money. Um, but I'm going to tell you this. The alien, not the Saurian, excuse me, the alien, where my alien, here it is. The alien is probably the most customizable species in the game. Now each of these species have a unique power associated with them. But the alien, all of it can be changed. He actually has an extra trait and more customizations in the tailor. This means you can customize the look of the alien more than you can some of these other species. You can make the alien look like a humanoid. So if you want to play a humanoid looking character, you can make the alien look like that very easily because they have more customizations in the tailor to change the look of the character. They also gain an extra trait slot. And that is, I think, the more important feature about the alien species is that they have that extra trait slot. Romulans, obviously, you can be a Romulan. You can be a Reman. You can be the liberated Boric Romulan or, the, again, an alien. An alien is in every faction. Under Klingon, you can be a Klingon. You can be a Friesen, a Gorn, a Jointrill, a Lethian, a Nausicaan. Uh, a lot of people like to play Orions on, uh, on the Klingon side. It's the only one you can play in Orion. Of course, Talaxian, and then again, Alien. Now, each of these do have special powers. As I said, they come with a, a trait already on them. For example, if you click this... It shows the available traits with that character, and they are they, they are different. There are different traits available with each one. But Alien has pretty much all of them, and pretty much you get one more trait. I think Alien is the most customizable. If you really want a customizable character, or you want to take a little more care and customization... Uh, picking the alien is probably your best bet. 
But if you want things just to be a little more click and play and a little less customization, but you just want to click and go and get started quickly, then go ahead and pick one of the species themselves, one of the specific species. Also, this is good for role playing, obviously. If you want to be a human or you want to be a, a, a any other species you can be, you can do that. But just note there are different um, traits available. For example, cold dwelling available here on the Andorian, not available on the human. So these traits are very important to your character as you progress through the game. They can make or break a character, and you have space and ground traits. Now, you may not know what all these do yet, but this is there's a lot of info presented here if you just click that race info button and select your race. Now, I'm not going to go over specifically all the traits so much. I'm just going to go over the ones that have benefited me in each career type. This video's goal is to focus on engineering, science, and tactical character, and basically how to, how to, how to make a good character um, out of those three careers. So, faction, alien species, now let's go to the career type. This is the third ring down the tier on the hierarchy. You want to choose what career. Let's say I've chosen Starfleet and I've chosen uh, human. Now I want to choose what career. Do I want her to be engineer, a science, or tactical? These are your three different careers. Now, the way that Star Trek Online is currently set up is that the powers associated with each career can only be used by that career. For example, a tactical character can only use tactical powers. It cannot use science or engineering on your captain. And when I say captain, I'm referring to your character, this person here that you are playing as. That is called your captain because you eventually become a captain. So the tactical powers are tactical powers and science powers are science powers and engineering or engineering. If you're a tactical officer, you cannot have science or engineering powers on your captain. But here's the thing, you can on your bridge officers. You see, you can have tactical engineering and science bridge officer. So what's a bridge officer? A bridge officer is basically your crew, the people beside you on your ship, the people that help you fly your ship, and the people that when you beam down to a planet are beside you and help you fight. You get to take four bridge officers with you on ground combat. And you can make that any mix of tactical science or engineering. You could have all tactical, you could have all science, you could have all engineering, or you could mix it up and have uh, two tactical and one science and one engineering, or two engineering and two science and one tactical. And that's for your bridge officers. And so whatever career your bridge officer is, tactical science or engineering, they can have that power. So you get to utilize that power on ground, and of course you need that power, is those powers in space as well. Those become your space powers and ground powers that you can activate. So that's how it currently is. Now this may change uh, in the revamp. There's, I guess you're going to maybe be able to have different, different career powers, something like that. But right now, this is how it is. So when the new stuff comes, we'll, we will revisit. But right now, this is how it is. Okay, so what does each class mean, right? Because this is what people want to know. What, what do I play as? So I want to play as a tactical character or a science, or an engineering, and what does that mean? Okay, if you, th if you are familiar with any other MMOs, a tactical character, he's going to be your warrior class. He is going to be the guy that does DPS, he does damage, right? He is going to go out there and just kill everyone. Also melee. If you're big into hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, you don't like to fire weapons, but you want to use actual melee weapons. You can do that very well on a tactical character. The sacrifice you make with the tactical character is that maybe his shields and health aren't so good. Maybe he dies a little more than a tank would. So there's a sacrifice there. The tactical officer, the kind of powers he's going to have available, are going to be the kind of powers that buff and debuff. 
he's going to have a lot of buffs for himself, a lot of debuffs for the enemy. And what does that mean, basically? A buff for yourself is basically, uh, it's like buffing yourself up. It's like making you better. And a debuff is like making your enemy worse. Doing something to your enemy that makes him worse. That's uh, a very, very basic description of buff and debuff. So a tactical character is going to be throwing out powers that do buff and debuff. They're going to be a lot of like resistance ratings or extra damage ratings and things like that that you'll be doing. Okay, so that's tactical. I would say that a lot of people mostly start with tactical because they associate that, rightly so, with a warrior class or doing a lot of damage. But just know there is a sacrifice for doing damage. It's like a piece of paper. It can slice your finger and cut you, but it's still paper. You can punch a hole through it very easily. That's a good description. Okay, then you have, let's start with the, the, this one up here, the engineer. Think of the engineer as, as your tank and as your devices kind of guy. He's going to be throwing down powers that are actual mechanical equipment. He's going to be throwing down things like mortars, things like phaser turrets that fire on the enemy, shields to protect your team. He can put a shield down on the ground and protect your team. He can put a force field dome around your team. He can do an orbital strike and have wep and have a uh, this this weapon from this from your ship actually attack the enemy. He can do all of those things. He even has, and which is I've always thought a little odd, a medical generator to heal all your teams. You would think the science officer would have a medical generator, but no, it is engineering character that actually has that. He is going to be able to buff shields easily. He, in fact, he has a native ability that helps with shield strength and shield regeneration. So the engineer is a good tank. The engineer is also good for a, a flying cruisers. For example, if you fly a cruiser in space, a cruiser type ship, and you have a full commander bridge officer station on that cruiser, uh, using that cruiser on, a, in, on an engineering character is just gonna mesh and meld really well. Um, I forgot to mention on tactical character, you're going to be looking at mostly escorts for doing a lot of damage in space. Tactical care escorts have the ability of being able to use cannons and dual cannons and dual heavy cannons, which do a lot of damage. And if you have a commander tactical bridge officer station on an escort, being a tactical character fits really well with an escort. Now you can fly any ship on any of these on any of these classes. You do not have to be a tactical character to fly a, a, an escort. You can fly an escort on an engineer. You can fly an escort on a science character. You can fly a cruiser on a tactical character. You can do whatever. But it, things just mesh better and mesh well if you keep like to like. You don't have to. It's not necessary. But like to like kind of might, makes things a little easier. An engineer to a cruiser, a science character to a science ship, and a tactical character to an escort kind of just makes sense in the game but you don't have to but it just makes more sense so the engineer is probably a good character if you don't want a lot of frustration in the game a lot of people new players specifically may jump into tactical and be like i'm dying all the time this game isn't fun i'm going to quit playing you will not have that problem as much as an engineer so that's something to keep in mind as well. If you're a new player, you're new to MMOs, you're new to this game, this genre, this universe, and you just want to have a good time and not worry too much about dying, because that can get annoying, an engineer may best suit you. But if you want to do a lot of damage, tactical. Now here's the fun one, or can be fun, science. Now science is very iffy. Science can go wrong very fast. It is, uh, what I mean by that is that it's very easy to make a bad science character or a science character that doesn't do a lot of damage or help or do anything. Very easy, probably easier on a science character to make a bad one or a bad build. 
And that's because Sign's character is pretty much the lowest DPS character in the game or considered that. But if you know what you're doing, you can pull off the DPS with a science character. The damage. Damage per second, what DPS stands for. You can pull that off on a science character if you know what you're doing. But it can also go the opposite way very fast. It is probably the most difficult one to set up in this game because there is such a range of good and bad. So you can make a really good science character, but it's probably the hardest one in the game. If you just, again, want click and play and you want to get in and do things nice and succinct, a tactical or engineering would be more focused. A science character, think of him like your mage. He's going to be throwing out all those magey powers and, and uh, all, those, all, those, all those things that affect people in weird ways, right? That's your science character. But he's also a little more than that. He can be a healer as well. He's the only character that can do like a medical tricorder on you and heal your health points. He can do um, medical nanites on you, which are these little things that uh, keep you healed if you lose health points. He can be a total healer for your team or the game. Now this has its disadvantages. If you have nothing but healing powers, then you're not going to be doing a lot of damage, right? So there are ad advantages and disadvantages to just being a healer in this game. This game promotes DPS a lot. And uh, I can talk about that more later, but this game, the way it's set up currently, the way the developers have designed the game, promotes DPS. That's just the way the game is. I wish it weren't. It maybe didn't always used to be, but it certainly is now. All the different time limits on STFs and things they've incurred kind of promote DPS. It promotes a high DPS player. So it might be more beneficial to build a science character as an offensive science character, throwing out powers like doing um, fire damage under an enemy. It can actually open up this fire vent under an enemy. Uh, oh, and a great one for space. If you're a science character, you have to use gravity well, or you have to at least try it once. Gravity well is probably the science officer's most awesome ability besides photonic fleet. Science officers have this ability in space of having a photonic fleet. That means you can call upon, you push a button and literally three ships will pop up in space and fight alongside you. Uh, they are photonic ships. They don't do as much damage, but if you buff up your auxiliary power, they can do a lot of damage. And that is an ability only a science, science uh, character has. So, those are the three career types. Now, what you want to play with just really depends on how you want to play the game. If you are, again, new to MMOs, new to Star Trek Online, don't know the franchise, you may want to just go with an engineer. That's probably your best balance. An engineer can fly cruisers, which you will probably, at the beginning of the game anyway, start with more often than not. You may want to fly the an iconic you know, Star Trek cruiser or whatever. If you want to do damage and you're okay with dying a few times but you want to you know buff yourself up and you can figure out how to do that again you don't always have to die with a tactical character i should say you can buff up resistance to things you just have to know what powers you're using to do that and know that you have to enable them all the time and quite frequently enable to do that um if you know what you're doing in the game you're a veteran or you know Star Trek very well, a science character can be a lot of fun. But just know that it can go very wrong very fast. So that is a basic overview of the factions, the species, and the, and the career types. Okay? I mean, that's a very... That's not an, an extremely in-depth overview. I mean, there is a lot more. I suggest, if you're creating a new character for this game, you read all this information. As you see, when I hover over each career, it talks about that career. Read that information and figure out what you want to do. And then study the species uh, traits that are available and see which ones appeal to you. And then think about the faction you want to play. Think about how you want to play the game. Good, bad, ugly. Do you want a lot of options? A Romulan is actually a good way to go for a lot of options. 
Starfleet, though, is still probably the biggest faction. I mean, let's just face it, Cryptic puts all their money and effort more into the Starfleet faction than they do the other ones. And that's just the way the game is. So these are the three basic things you need to figure out before you start playing the game. Or you get into building your character. So I'm going to call this part one of the video. We have now gone through those three things. And in the second video, we are going to concentrate on one of the career types. I'm going to bring up in the next video, the doctor. We will start with a science character. I'm actually going to start with my science character because he is the first character that I started with in this game. He is, he is my first character I created. And I started with a science character. Now, I am going to admit to you guys, it took me a good year to get a good science character going because I didn't understand it. And as I said, it is probably the hardest one to get. And at the beginning of the game, I was getting killed a lot as a science officer, but I've learned a lot over the years. So I can build a good science character. So the next video, we're going to concentrate on the science faction. We're going, or faction, I mean career. We're going to concentrate on the science career. We will talk about space powers and ground powers. I will show you my build, and we will just talk about what's available right now as a science officer. The next video after that, let's go to the engineer. The last doctor. He is my engineer. He is the second character I ever created in this game. I am very good as an engineer. I like the engineer. So in the third video, we will talk about the engineer space and ground powers and go over how to build a good engineer. It won't be as in depth as my last engineer video, but it will be more updated now because things have changed from that last video. And in the final video, the fourth part, we will go over the tactical character. He is the War Doctor. He is the third character I ever created in the game. Tactical Officer. Very good. We'll talk about the space and ground powers and how to build a tactical officer that can actually sustain himself in a fight and not die all the time. And that's how we're going to break this up. And again, this is not incredibly in-depth. I'm just going to go over everything that's available and show you everything you can do now and how to build a good character. Now in the future, this is going to change because the bridge officer revamp is coming and that means powers available to us are going to change and how we get those powers trained to our bridge officers and to our captain are going to change. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. For now, I'm gonna sign off on this part and stay tuned for the second part where we dive into the science career. That'll be fun. All right. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.